This is a video on doing a proper respirator fit test because I don't think a lot of people know what that is because I get asked a lot what size gas mask should I buy and without your head dimensions I don't know and it really varies from mask to mask. So I'll show you what's roughly done, although this is going to be very simplified because I don't have all the equipment, what would be done in an actual you know, real scenario if you work for a company and you had to have a respirator fitted for you. So it's called a fit test. Now I should point out I should be totally clean shaven and I'm not because that can break the seal of a mask but what I'm going to demonstrate is what would happen. So firstly they'd measure your head and a lot of the time they measure your jaw and from your jaw to the back of your head. It will really vary depending on what mask they're going to fit for you. But with some masks for example the mask can be a similar size but the jaw area can be differently shaped. So they obviously get a good measurement of your jaw to know, you know why that what they're going to fit you with. Now in this video I'm going to demonstrate the Israeli 4A1 Shalon mask, the civilian mask. Now this is a one size fits all for adults which is quite convenient but what I want to sort of point out is how you really need to do some checks with a mask to make sure it's actually airtight to your face because a mask that leaks isn't going to work. Or I mean against less severe threats yes it will give you like 99% protection and that's probably good enough but against some threats if it doesn't give you 100% protection you're dead so what I'm going to do is run you through the process of what you should do if you've got a mask and want to check it actually works properly. So first, once we assume that you've looked, because you're going to be doing this from home, unless you've worked in an industry where you've had a mask fitted for you, and then you can know from that exactly what sizes you need to get, you're going to have to do this. So I'd advise you, if you think you have an average size head, probably to get a medium mask, but that can vary. I personally always are on the side of getting a slightly larger mask and tightening the straps a bit more because that's going to be more comfortable and I think more likely to fit you. I found from personal experience masks that are too small um, end up being too tight and then kind of buckling and breaking the seal. So you put the mask on and once you've got the mask on your face what you want to do is obviously evenly tighten the straps. So I'm going to do these two and then the bottom two. Okay, so that should be an airtight seal. Now, how we do a primitive check for an airtight seal is to cut our hands here. Where the mask sucks into my face, that means there should be a pretty good airtight seal. It's creating a vacuum because the mask's on my face. Now, if I have my hand here and exhale, the opposite happens because we're checking that if I put the exhale valve, air can't get out and it does the exact same thing but in reverse, the mask inflates. So, once you have a mask like this, you then want to test it with the filter. So what you're going to do is this both checks the filter's working. The mask makes an airtight seal with the filter. This is why I've said, for example, Soviet Ghost masks won't take NATO filters to the extent they'll protect you, or at least not fully, because the screw threads are different. An Israeli mask can take both Ghost and NATO filters, so it's pretty good in that regard. Right, okay, so that's the filter on the mask. Now what we're going to do is block the filter intake to check it's still airtight. Right, good, it's airtight. So what I need to do now is I always just test it with um, in the bathroom with like smellies. So you could use a strong deodorant or a strong air freshener. Now when you're actually in a place like an industry, they get some really harsh smelling chemicals, you know, that make you almost nauseous or starts coughing and spluttering, and that's to, you know, test that even if a slight bit gets through, it's going to affect you. So, what you need to do is get into quite a confined space, and then spray some really strong chemicals. And then what that will do is, if the filter's not working, if your mask isn't airtight, if one of the seals in the mask is broken, you will smell that smell, and you'll know by smelling the smell, as long as you've got the mask tightened your face properly, that the mask isn't working, or the filter isn't working. Then you could try a new filter for process of elimination. If you go through several filters that should work, and you, you know, now know they're not, then you know that there's actually a problem. But, um, you need a new mask, basically, or a mask that's better for fitting your face. But the point is, that unless you do these checks, you're not actually going to know if the mask makes a proper seal of your face. I've got lots of masks that seem to make a good enough seal, 
if I was to test them, I'd realise that they don't actually make a good enough seal simply because there's a little tiny gap somewhere where the shape of my face will not work for the mask even when tightened as much as possible. So from that I will know that it's you know not a good enough mask for me to use. So again, the steps are, with or without the filter on, put your hand over the intake. You know, you start suffocating. As long as you can take your hand away and uh, not, you know, suffocate, that's a good sign. So you just do the opposite to check the exhale. I can't really do that with the filter on, so I'll just take that off. But you need to then block the exhale part. If the mask starts inflating, that's good. Some masks, it might be hard to block the intake or the exhale, so you might have to do one or the other. Masks where you can do both are obviously superior, because, you know, you can obviously do a better check. With this mask, I can probably yeah, take that off, you know, just take off that little plastic bit. And you can see here, there's a little tiny voice diaphragm on one part, and there's also the rubber exhale valve. I can't see myself where that... There's the exhale valve there. And there's a tiny voice diaphragm near the intake there. So... There we go. And I was just pushing my hand down on the uh, exhale valve to stop it opening, but... With some of the masks, you might easily be able to sort of dismantle the plastic on them and do that. On some masks, I obviously wouldn't advise you to dismantle the mask to try and do that, but... For example, on my 3M half face mask, because it's got two really big filters on each side, you can't put your hands over to block the filters, but you can do a fit check by putting your hand on the exhale valve, trying to exhale, and if the mask starts farting around your face, you know you've got a good seal. So, there you go. That is how to do a proper fit check. As I said, you need to do a fit check, because if you don't, you might assume the mask fits you and then be in for a lot of trouble if you ever have to need it. Uh, this obviously goes without saying that you should have spare sealed filters for a mask, and then obviously not break the seals in case of emergency until you actually need them, and then you just have to hope they work. That's why it's always a good idea to have in-date filters rather than having some 30-year-old filter that's still sealed and hoping it's going to work. It could still work, but I wouldn't trust my life on it. I just keep that for, you know, minor things where you might need a filter. But, as for fit checking, once you have a mask you think will fit you, you'll have to fully tighten the straps, try the intake and outtake tests, and then once they work, or you think they're working, get a filter, put it on the mask, get into a confined space, and get something that smells really, really strong, and then if you can smell it with the mask and filter on, you know that your seal's not good on the mask. So hopefully that's explained to everybody how to do a proper fit check with a mask, at least to the standard you can do at home, so you can actually get a good idea if a mask fits you or not. Thanks for watching.